This is an instructional video for placing and working with buses in the multi-sim software by National Instruments. A quick introduction, buses are pretty important when you're dealing with components that have uh, similar pins, similar in function and name, uh, but they connect to multiple ICs. A great example is a microprocessor system with memory ICs and the address and data buses. The data bus might be D0 through D7 pins and these might be hooked together in 3, 4, 5 and maybe even more ICs until the system is completed. The same way with the address lines and the address lines might be larger in number, maybe 16 all total. So running all these wires in parallel all over multi-SIM, trying to move components gives me nightmares. Uh, so buses are what you use to be able to do this. They're quite easy to work with. First thing you do is select a bus. We're going to place a bus to the right of these two memory ICs that we have here and you double click and the bus is placed and bus is a little bit strange with uh, multi-sim but I'm going to move the name up here to start out um, you just can't click on them and change the names like you think to so if you double click on this bus it'll bring up a window that gives you the bus settings and I always like to change the names to something meaningful so I'm going to change it from bus 1 to data bus and remember the whole purpose of this bus is to take these add data lines that we have here D0 through D7 and connect them to D0 through D7 on this IC uh, without having to draw eight separate parallel lines so we're gonna start on the top IC and this is a little quirky operation that works with multi-sim you look as I drag this over to the bus to connect it I'm gonna take my little dot just above the line and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna call that D0 since it's connected to the D0 pin and I'm gonna do the same thing remember as I drag this over be just a little bit above so the line comes up to a slant in the up direction that's a little quirky thing if you don't have the thing right in the right position that little dot it'll drive you nuts then I click hit B1 and I'm gonna do the same for the rest of my Be careful to name these correctly, and like I said, the getting the lines to point up is just me trying to be neat and tidy, but it does look good, so it's good, uh, good convention. And I'm just about finished here. Now, what I did was give each one of these lines a connection name when it connects to the bus. So when I come down below on this lower IC, I'm going to drag out from the D0 pin and connect that to the bus. When I click that, instead of me typing a name in, I'm going to choose a name that I've already defined. And when I choose a D0 line, that means the D0 line on this bus is connecting pin 11 of the U2 IC to pin 11 of the U1 IC. And the way I make my connections when I draw the line over, do this one, is come down in this available bus line section, select the correct entry for the pin that I'm connecting. In this case it's D2 and click the OK button. And you want to make sure you get all those right because if you hook the bus lines up incorrectly for the data or the address lines uh, weird things will start to happen definitely not the things that you expect and you can see um, even though I've done this this for a while I've also struggled with getting the 
lines to point in the up direction. And sometimes, too, it's tough to keep track of which line you're on and which one you're connecting at the time. So, right now I'm working on V6. Scroll down to get D6, and last but not least, D7. And I'm going to also draw another bus here. I'm not going to go through all these, but I'm going to also drag this straight down through. Um, by the way, you can click on these. You can make them go different directions. You can drag them all over the schematic that you want to and run them right by other ICs as soon as you double click this it does it. I'm going to drag this name up here so it's out of the way and in convention with the other one and you can also lock the position. I'm not sure why you would want to do that. I don't like to do it. So double click on here, change the name and this one I'm going to call, this bus I'm going to call the address bus and I'm going to click OK. and. I would start the same procedure over again, dragging the wires to here, naming them appropriately. Um, this time it's going to be A0, all the way down to A12, and I would do the same thing then down on the lower IC, once again this time selecting the name, not typing it in, so that we have the two pins on the two ICs the two A0 pins connected together, the two A1 pins connected together through a bus. And you can see that this is definitely a lot nicer than trying to draw parallel lines. Um, one other bus that you might want to do just to show you that you can include signals that have different lines, I'm going to put a third bus down through here. And this bus is going to represent my control bus for the control signals that I have. Double click on that to get my name to control. I'm going to click OK and you'll notice I can drag this right signal over to here and I'm going to call it right not because it's a low active signal and I can turn around and come down here and drag that one over. And I'll select right knot, and those two are connected. And I can continue to connect different devices on here. If the buses aren't long enough, you can drag them out longer. I could put the enable signal in here also. I'm going to call that enable knot because it's enable one knot, I think. It's low active. And up here I'm going to click the enable signal, drag that over to the control bus, and select the enable hub. And that's how buses work. They're very convenient, they're easy to work with. I use them a lot of times even when I don't have um, address and data buses. I just use them when I have a lot of signals running all over the place. And uh, multi-sim sometimes drives me nuts as I'm dragging parts around.